You think this is confusing? Try living inside my head! The Joker, or just Joker, within the 2004 The Batman universe has more or less the same personality we've seen throughout other depictions, just with some minor differences. With two of the differences being, he's actually not abusive towards Harley, and instead, he appears to have feelings for her, which is something new for the Joker to exhibit. The second difference is, the Joker is more than a well-capable fighter. As always, Joker has a special bond with Batman and indirectly Bruce Wayne, which we see this bond be tested and shown to us throughout the whole series, sometimes more, sometimes less depending on the episode. However, the obsession that Joker has for Batman is still there. He's always seen Batman as the other side to his coin, and the show does a great job at showing that in some of its episodes. The Joker even says that they are two sides of the same coin in the episode The Bat and the Belfry. But going into his mind for a minute, the Joker suffers from countless disorders, resulting in the deranged man that we see before us that seems to lack all morals, or at the very least, has his own sick moral code. The Joker also seems to lack the concept of most emotions, such as fear, anxiety, sadness, and so on. Either that, or he's chosen to forget them as they don't benefit him. The only emotion he truly needs is happiness, and it's not even true happiness. It's just his default, as his mind is twisted beyond belief, and now uses this quote default happiness to protect itself. Something else to note is that the Joker isn't even in full control of his own mind and actions. To reference Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight, the Joker is like a dog chasing cars. He wouldn't know what to do with one if he caught it. He just does things. Now, normally I would cover every episode the character I talk about appears in and I would cover the comics as well. But considering the amount of episodes and comics the Joker appears in within this universe, we'd be here all day if I did that. So I won't be covering them all. Another reason why we won't be is because not every episode and comic issue elaborates on his personality. So instead, we'll just be focusing on a couple parts from a few of the episodes. And what a better place to start than the first episode of the series and his introduction episode with that being The Bat and the Belfry. This episode shows us just how sinister the Joker really is, as well as showing us how quickly Joker became obsessive over Batman. In the episode, Joker's ultimate goal is to release his Joker toxin into Gotham, which would result in the mental collapse and or death of the citizens. Joker encounters Batman at every turn of the way, but Joker looks at these encounters as more of a dance and a game, rather than an actual fight. However, that doesn't mean Joker can't fight. On the contrary, actually, this Joker is quite skilled, nimble, and quick on his feet. Which not only surprises Batman, but Joker's wild fighting style allows Joker to keep up with Batman and to catch him off guard occasionally. These encounters, as enjoyable as they are for Joker, are confusing and straining for Batman, making him question more than just who he is, but also just how someone can be this crazed. And those two questions would then spark Batman's own obsession with the Joker, which would then create the sick bonds between the both of them that we all know and love. Joker's introduction episode not only serves as our introduction into their bond, as it's their first encounter, but also our first look into how obsessive they both can be. The next episode we'll quickly cover is the rubber face of comedy. In this episode, Joker captures Ethan Bennett and begins torturing him. Detective Yen and Batman would then show up, and Batman throws a battering at Joker, knocking the putty gun out of his hand before he can use it on Ethan. Afterwards, Ethan would accidentally breathe in some of the fumes from the Joker putty, which would then cause him to slowly transform into Clayface, which not only breaks Ethan's body, but also causes Ethan's mind to warp, resulting in Ethan losing grip on not only himself, but also reality. During this torture, Joker is laughing and making jokes the entire time, which just goes to show how inhumane he really is. He takes great pleasure in causing others pain, and he very much enjoys watching other people struggle with their sanity. There's multiple reasons for this, with some of them being, he's just evil and violent, he's an agent of chaos, he's completely insane, and so on. 
But you could also argue that Joker likes to make others go insane because it makes him feel normal, like he's not alone. By him causing other people to go insane, he's creating this folia a du, if you will. This episode really shows us just how far Joker is willing to go to create more madness within Gotham. And with that, it also shows us just how evil and serious of a threat the Joker really is. The next episode we'll talk about is The Laughing Bat, where the Joker's obsession is greatly shown as he dresses up as the Batman. The episode shows us just how similar the Joker thinks the two of them are, as well as how connected the Joker feels to Batman. Joker feels so connected to Batman that he literally dresses up as him and starts taking down criminals. He even attacks people who commit small infractions, which not only shows us how obsessed he is with the Batman, but also shows us that even though he's obsessed and feels this bond, he still truly doesn't understand the Batman. And it was that misunderstanding that would continue to drive this obsession. Joker started to feel a deep desire to understand the Batman and to have the Batman understand him. Not only does Joker want Batman to understand him and see him the way he sees himself, but he also wants Batman to see that he isn't so different from Joker. He wants Batman to see himself the way Joker sees him, which is the other side to his coin and in a sense, the other half of Batman. Joker wants nothing more than for Batman to feel and acknowledge the connection that he himself feels. Joker wants this so much that he injects Batman with his Joker venom, which turns Batman into Joker, so to speak. This was the Joker's crazy attempt at getting the Batman to see through his eyes. It was also his attempt at getting Batman to feel that connection, as well as letting Batman in on how he lives, which would allow Batman to understand him better. This again shows us that Joker might feel alone in his madness, and alone in general. All Joker wants is a friend, someone who can relate to his issues and troubles. The final episode we'll talk about today is the episode Two of a Kind, where we're given our introduction to Harleen Quinzel, aka Harley Quinn. This is the episode that I referenced at the beginning of the video whenever I said this Joker isn't abusive towards Harley and actually appears to have feelings for her. In the episode, Harleen gets fired from her show for ambushing Bruce Wayne, as well as for giving bad advice after Joker calls in. Joker, being in his words, her number one fan, takes a quick interest in her, and she takes a quick interest in him. He ends up taking her back to one of his evil lairs, and the two begin bonding. Eventually, Joker would suggest a night out of town, but a change of clothes would need to be had, seeing as she was worried about what the masses would think if they saw her with him. So, Joker gives her a costume to put on, and Harley Quinn is born. When Joker sees her in her new persona, he whistles at her and pants like a dog, which not only goes back to him being attracted to her, but also goes back to Joker being very similar to a dog, with him being a little more primal. Another thing to note about this episode, and other episodes where Joker obtains sidekicks, is that it helps to provide the narrative for Joker that Batman and him are just two sides of the same coin. It helps to provide that connection, seen as it's another thing they have in common. Anything Joker can find to relate to Batman, he will find, and he will make it a similarity, even if it's in his own sick and twisted way. Overall, the episodes I listed and covered do a phenomenal job in so many aspects, such as exploring Joker's mind, creating a new relationship between Joker and Harley, showing the bond between Joker and Batman, and so many other things. Another thing that made this Joker so appealing, well, to me at least, was his design. And while I prefer his straight jacket design, his later design within the show is still great. Personally though, I think the straight jacket design might be my favorite design for the Joker in terms of cartoon TV shows. Something about it is just very appealing to me. But moving off of his design and onto his voice actor, Joker is voiced by another legend within the voice acting community. With that being, Kevin Michael Richardson. And for those that didn't know, he voiced Captain Gantu in Lilo and Stitch, as well as Robert Hawken in Static Shock. Kevin Michael Richardson brought so many new things to the table with his portrayal of Joker, and all of them I absolutely love. 
He definitely cemented his legacy with this role, and in my opinion, he embodied the Joker perfectly. His performance is truly spectacular and isn't talked about enough, so shout out to Kevin Michael Richardson. He's truly a legend and one of the greats. But with all that said, this has been the Jeopardous Joviality of the Joker. If you made it this far into the video, comment down your favorite episode from the Batman 2004 that has the Joker in it. I always love to hear y'all's opinions. I think mine would either be the episode The Bat and the Belfry or the episode The Rubber Face of Comedy. Also, real quick, big thank you to all of you for clicking on this video. I seriously can't thank y'all enough. Just know, I really appreciate it and am forever grateful. With all that said though, it's been ugly, and I'll see y'all in the next one.